mark of excellence. 1995 Chevrolet Astro all-wheel drive. A vehicle built on unfortunate pedal van jokes and Matt Foley one-liners. So a little disclaimer on this one. Uh, this is a project vehicle, as you can see. In Maine, it is required to have safety inspections, and this being a recent purchase, at the time, the front turn signals weren't working, so the owner had removed the grill and the bumper cover to access the wiring. And being such a short time period of trying to get this vehicle in, here it is, with minus the grill and front bumper. Um, what compounded the situation is that uh, we also had a couple snowstorms within a three day period that this was actually filmed on Christmas Eve. Uh, luckily the vehicle was at a place where we could actually do some driving around in it and actually test out the little unique feature about this van. So, uh, anyways. Introduced in 1985, the Chevrolet Astro and its GMC Safari Twin were GM's first attempts at the minivan. The smashing success of the Chrysler's K-based minivans in 1984 were quickly laying waste to the traditional wagon, and GM needed a player. These vans were much larger than those front-wheel drive Chryslers, however, and GM had hoped that they could use that to their advantage. Early promotion of the Astro claimed for was when life was too big for a minivan. This, of course, did not put a dent in the caravan's market share, but the Astro would go on to live a long, successful life in the GM lineup. The Astro and Safari slattered underneath GM's full-size vans at the time. Contrary to popular belief, despite sharing much of its underpinnings with GM's mid-size S-trucks, they were not on the same platform. While those trucks were troop body on frame, these vans sat on their own unique unibody platform, the M-body. Drivetrains were plucked from the S-trucks, and the front suspension is shared with GM's full-size B-body cars at the time. Body-wise, they came in two flavors, being the panel cargo vans for contractors, and the traditional passenger models for everyone else. Despite strong sales, GM had found that they were nowhere near Chrysler's dominance in the minivan market in the late 80s. This led to the introduction of the smaller front-wheel drive U-body vans, the Chevrolet Lumina APV, Pontiac Transport, and Oldsmobile Silhouette in 1989. The Astro was now firmly slotted as a midsize, and would live like that until its eventual discontinuation all the way in 2005. Power came from the only available engine at the time, the 4.3 liter L35 V6, which produced a modest 190 horsepower and 260 foot-pounds of torque. A tired and true 4L60E four-speed transmission would then normally send power to a solid rear axle. But this van is different. This van is an all-wheel drive model, developed by British company FF Developments for GM, this feature was first introduced in 1990, making it the first factory van in America you get with some form of four-wheel drive. These early models featured a Borg Warner 4472 transfer case, which in, was engaged in four high on a full-time basis, which, of course, significantly hurts the fuel mileage. 99 and newer models got a new automatic transfer case from New Process, which in short, only activated when the computer sensed wheel sen sensors sense wheel spin. And yes, this system works very well. I drove this van the day after a pretty significant ice storm. And despite the property that this was being filmed at being covered in nothing but glare ice, it performed wonderfully. We had a Chevy S10 Blazer and two-wheel drive on site as well, and that thing spun its rear tires like crazy, even at low RPMs. The Astro, unlike most modern all-wheel drive systems, sends equal power to front and rear. This means that even on the ice, the Astro keeps moving forward with little issue. I was impressed at how well this van handled poor conditions well. Despite its ragtag look, I found myself enjoying this van. It's very practical. It has standard third row seating that's not a cramped hellhole. The seats remove easily so you can haul a lot more stuff. There's cup holders and cubby holes everywhere. Everywhere! I could easily see four kids easily growing up in these seats with all their books and toys and Game Boys and such. I found myself enjoying the flamboyant 90s pinstriping on the side. Color me biased, but the hearty rumble of the 4.3 was bringing a smile to my face. I was fascinated with this three-piece Dutch door in the back. 
the interior for a van this age was in fairly good and clean shape. I could even see myself owning a van like this. But I'm not going to gloss over the faults in this van. This is a 22-year-old van. A 22-year-old 90s GM product. As explained before, the front turn signals weren't functioning and were requiring some in-depth investigation. The rockers are just about non-existent due to a lifetime of living in the far north. Previously, this van had lived its life in Minnesota. The passenger door handle was having trouble. And at some point, the center console had shattered and been reassembled with hot glue. But I'm not going to get into the stigma of a van like this. And you know what? I wouldn't care. You don't buy a van like this for its luxury standards or its supreme driving dynamics. You buy a van like this because of its functionality. These vans were and are still popular among small business owners. GM didn't build these vans for 20 years for nothing. Its size and third row seating proved popular among families. A segment that GM would continue to find success with a similarly sized Lambda family of large crossovers. And that brings up another thought. With the all wheel drive option, these vans could be seen as some sort of proto-crossover in that sense. Unibody construction, V6 power, third row seating, and all wheel drive. Give it a swoop of your body than the traditional van box and you would essentially have a crossover. Just ignore the pickup truck rear end. I could totally see myself living with the flaws of a van like this. It's quirky, it's weird, and it's functional. It's GM so parts are easy to find. And that all wheel drive system works surprisingly well. This particular Astro has about 134,000 miles on the odometer and it still has plenty of life left in it. 90s GM's interiors typically, typically disintegrate between 200,000 and 230,000 miles, so this has plenty of life left in it before that. It combines the best parts of quirky and functionality, all wrapped in a cardboard box package. And that's the beauty of a van. So what if you look like Matt Foley down by that river? A van is a vehicle for work, and this one does work very well. I would like to thank Justin of Liberty, Maine for allowing me to drive your van down by the river. It may have been icy, but it just gave this little Astro prime opportunity to shine. Thank you, and have a good day. See, so you got multiple keys. Little H and H does not fit in. This is the door key. E, which I don't know why they... E, probably E for engine. And that classic GM.